the second time I may, I do these, these uh, generally go much quicker. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and show you how generics work. So let me go ahead and I just need to turn this on my screen, scene switcher off. Um, stop. Stop the scene switcher. Switch back to just screen. So what I'm, we're going to look at is the, um, I think we went through the, you know, the list interface, right? We, we kind of just glanced through the list interface. Uh, code. Back last week. You know, it was a whole week ago. Hard to remember, right? So, do open JDK. What is that? Java.util.list. There we go. Raw. So I think we went through this a bit and just said this is an interface, right? It's basically a bunch of method stubs that just need to be implemented, and then I created a shape, right? I've created rectangles and circles, yep. And I said, hey, here's everything. So this is an interface, right? And it takes in this E, which is what I said was a generic. Now, the generic means that uh, basically when we create a list, uh, we basically can say it's a list of string. We can put string in there when we create it inside of this less than and greater than sign. And what that denotes to the compiler is that it would just like to is that I would like to look through all this code and replace all the e's that I see with string. So, for instance, this method down here, looking for a one that makes sense, boolean add e e. This e, this capital e over here. You know, it's the same as this E, it's the same letter as this E over here. No weird font tricks going on there. They're the same letter. Okay? And that means that if I'm creating a list of strings, this E will be replaced with string instead. Or and if we and if we used integer, this this E would be replaced with integer. If you really need to think think of it, I'm not gonna use E E, I'll probably use something like E item just to make it easier to read. But let's go ahead and just see. Uh, review um, what we learned last time by writing a generic class of our, uh, a class that uses generics on our own. First, we're going to write it without using generics and just review the headaches of not using a generic. Okay, so um, right, what I have to do is open Eclipse, and then let's go ahead and what I did to make sure that I'm not going to be uh, you know accidentally like forgetting to switch stuff anymore is I will now be able to run an automatic scene switcher, which if I'm not focused on something, watch, it's going to switch to the web camera. Should. Tools. Automatic scene switcher start. Oh. So, there we go. So, so switch away for. Let's see. So, we're open. So, now, see, it's switched away because I don't have anything with Eclipse in the window. Remember what I was talking about with, uh, with regexes appearing everywhere? Well, turns out over here it's looking for a regular expression. Um, so I found that out by accidentally like putting this in and it said, hey, the regular expression you're entering is invalid. So it's looking for a regular expression. And what it's going to do is that when it sees a command prompt followed by anything else or PowerPoint in between anything or else or Eclipse followed by anything else, it's going to look, it, it wants, to, I tell it to switch to one mode. Okay, so now to, to switch back to if we see over here, it switched back to um, my normal uh, way of doing things. All right, so let's go ahead and close those. New class destruct should do, and this will go in the code folder. Code and generics. And let's go ahead, and I'm just going to create something called the box class. And along with it, I'm going to create the box example so I can make a box. Okay, the box is not going to be an exciting method. All right? It's very, is a bo or rather exciting class. It's a, actually a very boring class. Uh, the box is going to be a container which holds everything, and we'll modify this box later when we go and look at linked lists. But all this does is that box is going to hold, uh, it's going to be an object that holds any other object that I want it to. Okay? 
very boring behavior there, right? Um, so I'll go ahead and call it and, and say it gets an, and since I need to hold anything, well, that anything is an object, so I'll put in object O, okay? Um, and I'll go ahead and be, be correct about this and say it should be private, and, and I'll just create getters and setters for this thing. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and let it automatically generate public object get O, you know, returns object O, and set O takes in an object and sets it to this one, right? It's just a, it's just a container. It doesn't, it, it pretty much has no purpose in life right now because, you know, anything that I could do with it, I could just use the object for. In fact, you know, it, 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 this is purely an abstract example until we show you what we can do with it with the linked list. Um, but... This is just to review the problems of using uh, of when we don't have generics. So box B is equal to equal to a new box, right? And I can go ahead and say like B dot um, let's see B dot set O to five, okay? Right? I can put an integer in there, right? But part of the pro and I can put anything I want. I can put five in there because five will get turned into the wrapper class, right? Remember that the integer class five will get turned into an integer class, and that will get and that's an object, so that'll get stored in there. Same if I did 5.0 or the string 5.0 because the string is an object, we can store that in there. So let's go ahead and store that in there. Uh, string s is equal to b dot get o, right? And here I get into this is where I start getting issues with, with when I don't use generics. It says type mismatch cannot convert from object to string. What's that mean? Well, it means that box, right, it's holding an object. That makes sense? It's just holding an object. So it can't remember the fact that I stored a string in it. In fact, there could be like 100 lines between this line and this line, and I could have stored something else in there, right? I could have stored something else in there. All right, so um, let's go ahead. So, you know, it's not going to trust me when I say, hey, I can take this object and convert it into a string. So I would have to cast. So without using generics, and I'm using like a container like this, and this is the case with lists, I'd have to remember to cast everything. But even worse, suppose I'm stupid because, you know, you're a human. You're stupid, right? You make mistakes. You run it, and boom. Oh, I tried to – I put in a double, tried to turn that double into a string, so now I get an exception, right? So not only that, but I can easily shoot myself in the foot. I don't like doing that, right? And what I mean is that it, by that is that it's very easy for me to make a very basic mistake, right, like that, just carelessly, right? Very easy to make a careless mistake that doesn't trigger a compile time error, which means that I have to track it down and fix it. And this could be very annoying because this, this example's not even really thir the 13 lines that it claims it is, right? But, you know, in much more annoying examples, this could be a, like a couple hundred lines. Okay, so I have to cast, right? I don't know what I mean to store in it, right? Unless I say uh, box, you know, box B, you know, unless I do something like string B, right? For a string box or something. So I can't really sell, tell you what I want stored in it unless I give it a very, unless I use a variable name that says so, right? And that's good progress, uh, good practice anyway, right? Um, so there's no documentation of intent just by me writing well, uh, anything here, what I mean to store in it. So what we can do is we can use generics, right, is the idea. If I want to store anything in there, right, I want this container to store anything, but what that anything is might differ, like, from one box to another. Like, maybe I want this box to hold a string, and I want uh, this box over here to hold a double, Right, but there's nothing going to be stopping me from putting a string in this box. Sorry, a double in this box and a string in this box. Right, there's nothing stopping me, even though I kind of said I'd like this to be the case. Right. So here, what I can do is that I can create this as a generic. I can add a generic here. Now, first, uh, let me go ahead and just reset this back to a working order. Notice that basically the changes I'm making here aren't going to actually change anything in the uh, whether or not this compiles. So um, this E basically says uh, I'm going to be replacing any E objects I see here with an with an with the capital E. Okay. 
So instead of having object in all those places, I have an E. Now, what this means now is that when I come over here, I can say, uh, I'd like to make this a box for string. Okay? A box of strings. Okay? And then notice what happens here. Uh, compile time, uh, ex ex you know, compile time error over here. It says, you cannot use the set method because it's expecting a string and you're passing me a double. You can't do that. Well, that's interesting. Well, what if I switch it to a box of doubles? And of course, it makes sense that I would have to switch that on both sides, right? Double, double, um, b dot set o, string s, and it says basically, yeah, you can set this over here, uh, but then you know you're getting an error over here, not even without the cast, right? It says uh, you can't convert from a double to a string. So what goes on is that whatever I put in here, it basically changes the e anywhere. It kind of, the e is kind of like a wild card, a find replace thing. It's something that you can. It's basically a type that you can that you can uh, change on the fly. So this box now is a box of doubles. And so basically everywhere throughout the go a code, the E gets replaced with double. And then you get a double replaced over here and then double replaced over here. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's a pretty useful tool. It means that basically I can't shoot myself in the foot anymore because this method expects a double. Okay. Um, I, can't, I don't have to cast anymore because uh, it knows that basically it's going to be expecting a double. Right, no needing to cast downcast from an object to another to something else. So basically, I can say to the uh, to the compiler and to anybody who's reading my code, basically, I know I just want to store this type of thing in here, or that this list is composed of just these things. So it makes it a really, really useful tool. Okay. So um, now, what happens if I don't use this over here? I mean, aside from the errors that I'm causing down here. What, what happens then to that E if I don't use this, right? Well, it says that since you're not saying what you're putting in here, I have to assume that you're going to put anything you want in here, which means that all the E's will be replaced by objects. So that's what happens. If you don't put it in, all these E's simply get replaced by object by default. Okay? That makes So that way you can store anything in it. But vast majority of the time, that's not what you want. Vast majority of the time when you make a collection of something, you only want to put one thing in there. <clears throat> all right. So, uh, so you're going to learn a lot more about uh, getting. More, you're going to get a lot more comfortable with writing generics in, uh, methods in this uh, upcoming lab. So, um, you know, it's nothing to get too stressed about. Um, I give. I have a nice write up of how to do that, and I give you like some nice code that you can just take a look at. Um, here we go. So, just wanted to get into a comp. Uh, you know, good state. So, so the goal for the day is to teach you about array lists. Okay. So first thing th first, I'm going to show you how to use an array list and what we can do with them. The second thing I'm going to do is we are going to build an array list from scratch. Um, not the whole array list, right? It's actually going to be because to actually be a list in Java, I have to implement 22 uh, methods and I don't want to do that. Yeah, and, and I don't think you'd want to do that either. So instead, we're just going to like just focus on the important ones, adding stuff to a list, removing stuff from a list, getting stuff at in a random index. So right now I'm going to try something I've never tried before, and this can make completely blow up in my face, okay, in the sense that this might be terrible. But let's go ahead and do this. Um, so the latest version of Java has something called JShell in it, uh, which is what we call a REPL. Um, now, if you've ever used Python before, you've probably experienced a REPL. Read, evaluate, print, loop. That's what it stands for. Basically, what it's going to do is going to read some code and just do it. So essentially, this is a shell that will just interpret my Java commands one at a time. So if I can do something like int x is equal to five, uh, five, it says, hey, I've created a variable called x. It's equal to five. And now I can ask it what five is. So essentially, it can do my code. Uh, I can just like do small uh, pieces of code to demonstrate that. So let's see uh, if I can't create array list from uh, like this. So array list l is equal to so array list. Um, throw this, I, sorry, throw trash, because I just want this to be a trash variable. I don't want to reuse this. It's equal to a new array list. Do I need to import this? Nope. Do not need to import this. Awesome. So I'm going to start by creating a array list. Okay. Array list list is equal to, 
and I'm going to do an array list of a string. This means that only a, a string should be able to go into this array list. Is equal to a new array list. Okay. Oh, forgot to put in the string over here. So there we go. Got to put it on both sides. So now let's go ahead and see how this. Oh, it's not being captured all the way over there. Um, let's see. Just give me one second. I realized that you're having some trouble seeing over there. So let me go ahead and just go into the see if uh, the display settings, because I'm projecting my disp display. Eh, we'll deal with it, right? There's not too much important. All the stuff that's happening is in the middle of the screen anyway. OK, so um, sorry that it's cut off. Um, let's see. So first thing we can do is that this creates a um, empty list, as you can see over here, with a si with of size zero, right? The first thing is that basically lists don't have a length; they have a size. So the size is zero, right? Okay. Um, let's actually do that. There we go. That's fantastic. That's better. Okay. Next thing we can do is we can um, add stuff to a list. So let's start by adding uh, a couple of things to this list. So fifth. So let's go ahead and I want to add all the different types of swords that we know. So let's go with, uh, you know, in the old days, they didn't actually have different words for sword. They just had, they just, in every language, it was just called a sword, right? The, <clears throat> the distinction between two-handers and zweihanders and claymores wasn't until later. Uh, the first thing is that when you add something, it returns true, typically. <clears throat> just to say that it was successfully added. Let's go ahead and add another thing. Uh, Gion. A katana. Okay, um, a saber. Okay, so we've got four different swords in our list. Okay, well, let's go ahead and see if it will automatically print my list if I just simply say list. Now, list has a, array lists have an automatic two string method in them, which just simply says call the two string method of everything stored in my list, right? Which I mentioned back in the lab. So, right, we've got four things in there. Let's go ahead and. Uh, but what's cool about these things is that we can add in different things. Oh, sorry, things at different index. So sword is at index zero, Gion is at two, one, Katana is at two, Saber is at three, right? So let's go ahead and add in a, um, let's go ahead and say list.add. Now we have a different, add, we have, now add method is overloaded. So you can tell it what index you'd like to add something into. So I'd like at index two to add a, and I'm going to add something that's not a sword, a halberd. Right, that's a pole arm. My D and D nerdage is leaking. So anyway, uh, list. Let's go ahead and see what we've got here. So we've got a sword, a geon, a halberd, a katana, and a saber. So what we notice here is that we've got, uh, you know, at index two now instead of at index, uh, we've got halberd instead of katana. Right? Katana used to be at two. Now it's at index three. Want to, don't believe me? Watch list.get, which is another method to get something at a specific index. I can just ask it. Uh, Right, you don't use the, first off. You don't use this notation, right? Saying that basically that you can only use this during arrays. You can only use this notation on arrays, right? Array lists, they have to use methods. Only arrays get to use the, the cool, super cool subscript notation in Java. Okay, so instead we have to use get and set. So get um, instead of, so instead of getting a so we're going to go ahead and get index three. And that will get us our katana, right? So it used to be index two. What's an index two now? Halberd. Okay. Yes. Why does it say two before add a ring? Sorry. In the beginning, when you added the name of a sword, why does it say two and oh. six and eight? Right? Okay. So this is just simply like keeping track of what what was evaluated. This is just features of the shell. You can pretty much ignore it. This part over here. The true though. What happens is that the add method. Uh, it has, there's two, over, so there's, it's a great question, by the way. There's two add methods, right? Overloaded. One takes in one argument, and what that does over here, as you may have guessed, is that this adds it to the end of the list, right? It added, we added sword, then Gian, then katana, then saber, right? Those simply just simply slapped onto the end of the list. Now, the add, this single argument add method, it returns a Boolean, true or false. It, add, it returns true, 
if it's able to uh, add it to the list, and false if it's unable to add it to the list. And uh, it never fails at ad adding it to the list, so it always returns true. That's why you get the true value. Um, this. Oh, this was the size, right? This all right? So it's just simply giving the, the size of the list. So now if we call list dot size, it gives us five, right? Is it? Is there? Uh, other question. I mean, this is just the shell. I'm simply. This is simply what. Ha uh, consider this line is simply what if I wrap this around in a in a print line statement. That's what's going on here. Every line in here is kind of being silently uh, wrapped around in a print line statement. So that's what this is over here. Okay. So it just makes it easy for me to just type stuff in like this on the fly rather than recompiling every time I make a change. That's why I'm doing it like this. Okay. Um, now, uh, halberd isn't a sword. Right? So we obviously should probably not keep that in the list. So what we can do is that we can, um, well, let's suppose I add a couple other things to the list. Like list dot uh, add, let's see, um, to index zero, let's see, uh, Kopesh, which is kind of a sword axe thingy. So, uh, so let's go ahead and say, okay, I forgot what uh what index halberd is at now, okay? I mean, obviously, I could figure it out by like going through or printing it out, but let's say I know that I want uh, out halberd's in the list. I need to remember where it's at. So what I can do is something called index of. There's a really cool method that lists have called index of. Index of um, halberd, okay? And that will give me what index it's at. And it says that halberd's at index three. So we can just see that, get, Index 3, Halberd. So let's go ahead and just print out the list again, right? Kopesh, Sword, Gion, Halberd, Katana, Saber, right? So now what we're going to do is that since that's not a since that's a pole arm and not a sword, let's go ahead and remove it. So list.remove, um, you'd think it would be list.remove Halberd, but no. What it is is that we give it the index we want to remove, which is index 3. And now when we remove something, it gives it back to us. It returns it to us just in case we wanted to use it. Okay, That's why the print line statement printed out halberd. Right? It tells us what we removed. Now if we go to if we look at our list again, right? It's gone. And furthermore, we don't we aren't left with a blank space here. Right? What's gotten on is that Kopesh, Sword, Gion, they stay where they are, but Katana moved down to take Halberd's place and Sabred moved down on top of that, right? It moved Saber, Katana moved over, and then Saber moved over to where that was, right? And the size automatically adjusted too. So this shouldn't be, is this confusing or, I mean, these are pretty straightforward, right? So let's go, so we've got add, we've got remove, so we've got get, we've also got set in case we want to change something uh, like that. So maybe I don't like uh, Kopesh being at the start of the list and I just want to swap it out with something. So list.set. Index zero. The, you put the index you want to change, and what I'd like to put there instead. So instead of a uh, Kopesh, let's put a Claymore there, right? And and again, it's just returning what was being replaced there. That's just simply the way it works. So yes. Does that mean Kopesh moves to one or? No, it, I'm replacing it. I'm just getting. I'm just so here's the change, right? I'm setting it. I'm just changing the value in it. And just being, and this whole return thing over here, where I'm returning, where it returned Kopesh to me, that was just Java or the array lists being very polite to me. It was giving it back to me on the off chance I wanted to store it somewhere. But as you can imagine, when I store something or remove something, a lot of the time, sorry, when I set something or I remove something, when something gets replaced or just taken away from the list, a lot of the times it's just trash, so I don't want it anymore. So I just throw it away, right? Make sense? So, yes? I have a question in each one of my users. I'm just trying to just be on your page, and I guess I'm just stuck here because it's Java. Uh, yeah, Java 9. Java 9. You need Java 9 for JShell. And then I can still type in Java. Yeah, and just type in JShell if, if, if Java is in your path. Oh, okay. So you got to add Java to your path to do that. Um, I mean, and I'm going to don't, I'm not coding in this for the entire, uh, entire, Time. I'm just doing this so simply so I can make very quick changes and so that we can see our changes. So I'm not going to be. This is just simply to demonstrate all the methods that I wanted to for this. So we had add, remove, get, 
set. Um, let's see. We also had index of. Index of was interesting. So Albert isn't in this list anymore. What if I go ahead and ask do la uh, in index of Halbert again, right? Something so it's not in the list anymore. So we've got like two design decisions going on over here. Oh, sorry, two choices for design. One is that we can return something that's a non that's nonsense for the user, or that we can crash the program. And Java's design decision was let's return negative one to the user. So uh, negative one is in Java means that it's just the default value saying it wasn't found in this array or this array list or any list whatsoever. If you get a negative one back, that means you can't, it, it's not in the list, right? And of course, if you try to use that, that will just simply crash the list. But it's a way, but it's extra information there. Now, that's not the way it works in Python, of course, because Python's awesome and also terrible at the same time. In Python, uh, if I make a list in Python of just one, you know, one, five, six, two, one, Four, right, right. So if I ask for a list, uh, if I ask for the thing at index one, so zero, one, two, three, four, five. So if I ask for the thing at index six, of course it's going to crash because that's out of bounds. But I have asked for the, and that's the same thing, uh, kind of error you'd get in Java. But in Python, if I ask for a negative one, it gives me four, the last element in the list. And in, that's a feature. Uh, negative two gives me the second to last thing in the list. Negative three gives me the third to last thing in the list. So it makes a way to kind of go in reverse. Uh, just so, that's just to, to let you know that basically what, what's in one language doesn't necessarily always translate 100% over to another language. So add, remove, get, set, index of, and size. Okay? Um, those are pretty much the big methods that we really need to, uh, that you pretty much worry about because add basically means I can add anywhere to, into the list and remove means I can remove anywhere in the list. And then if I want to remove a specific thing from the list, I just figure out where it is with index of, which will give me the index of the first uh, thing in the list. So uh, let's go ahead, just to give you an example of what I mean there. Uh, so list.add, let's say we add katana a second time. So this list can take duplicates, no problem. Uh, katana and katana and katana, right? So I like katanas, okay. So list. Go now. If I ask for the index of katana, you get zero, one, two, three. It gives me index three. It gives me the index of the first one it finds. So if I now list dot remove three, the thing at index three, right? And now I ask for the. So now here's the list again. Right, so now the, katana, the newest katana is at index four. It will give me the first katana in that list, right? So index of always returns the, basically goes from in, from index zero and then it stops once it finds something. And if it doesn't find the in, in, uh, your item, it returns negative one. Okay. So the cool thing about this is that it basically um, is resizable. So I'm going to switch over to Eclipse. Just simply because uh, that's e it's going to be easier now to write when I, if I write loops in here. So let's go ahead and do put this in array list evening. Okay, so we're going to put this in this folder, and we're going to go ahead and create an array list example class. So this is where I'm just simply going to show you that basically this uh, is pretty cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and do uh, use a, again create an array list of strings. This is just bas basically just showing off the really nice feature of the array list here that we really care about, which is that we it you know can basically put anything anywhere we want. Uh, array list list is equal to new array list of string. And why am I using string? Well, it's just simply so I have a visual indicator to remind myself that I that it's so I don't get the indexes and normally I'd be storing numbers, but I just want to not accidentally store, you know, get the indexes and the numbers I'm storing mixed up. So it's just a way to prevent myself from tripping myself up. So to use an array list, as you found out, you've got to actually import it. And that then you can use it. So for int i is equal to zero, i is less than 1000, 
I++. And basically, you can use these things to store anything you want. You can, you, you can create your own classes to store in here. Um, but you can use them basically anywhere you'd use an array, but anytime you'd want one where you don't know what the size is going to be. So here I'm just adding a thousand items to the array list. Um, print line list dot size and just showing you that they all get in there because okay so going to go ahead and add them all size is a thousand can up that to a hundred thousand and just handles that just no problem pretty much instantaneously um, and we can see that too uh, if I print out the list over here the actual list itself no problem whatsoever holds all the items I wanted to um, and I mean I can bury this what's cool about this is of course I can just, you know, say, I'd like to, inst to instead add everything to index 0. So 0 is going to go at 0 in front, and then 1 is going to go in front, then 2 is going to go in the front, then 3 is going to go in the front, and so on and so on. So run this, and this will take a bit longer. And now, basically, what happened? It's in reverse, because I added everything to index 0. So initially, 0 was not in an index 0. Then we put 1 at the front, and then 1 was at index 0, right? And then we put two in the front. So two was at index zero, and these guys all had to move over. And so we just simply did that for everything in there. And there was basically just nothing I had to do in order to basically add things in reverse to this list, which is pretty cool. The only thing I had to do was just add index zero. So everybody got a pretty good idea of what an array list can do. Um, your homework, sorry, so your lab this week will be basically... Uh, I'm sure you had to answer test questions in 1068 about how you worked with arrays. Um, like, you know, given this array, sum up all the numbers in the array. Or given this array, you know, find the minimum and the maximum. Like that kind of stuff. So we're just going to go over a bunch of exercises just like that, only it's going to be done with array lists. So nothing you haven't seen before, you're just doing it on array lists instead of arrays. So nothing too freaky, okay? Um, so with that said, let's go ahead and understand. So if it was just a class, yes? Um, what is in front of the I. Oh, so the reason for this is that basically uh, I is an integer, but I can't add an integer to an array list of strings. Oh, so I was cast. So I was right. turning it into a string. I know it's rather silly of me, but um, so okay. Let's go ahead. So now to get a better understanding of how to, um, you know, how array lists actually work, we're going to actually write an array list from scratch. So how does this actually work? Um, you know. How, how do we make, you know, uh, how does this do it automatically for us? Answer is it doesn't do it automatically. It just simply does everything that you'd want with an array. Uh, array lists are built, surprisingly, unsurprisingly rather, using an array. Uh, okay, so I'll have a main for testing. Um, and normally over here, if I wanted it to be a list, I would go, I'd say my array list of stuff implements list, right? And then I'd import all the methods over here. Um, and then I'd just have to implement all these methods. So let's go ahead and see uh, all the ones I want to really keep. Uh, you have add, add, don't care about add all. Contain seems useful, which simply says, does it contain this object? Um, index of is empty. Remove. So basically, there's nothing really here that I didn't mention that we didn't want already. So I'm going to go ahead and control Z. And okay, so we're just going to create our own array list. Okay. So the first thing is that array lists under the, you know if we if if we imagine this is a car and we just open up the hood and see what's actually how it's actually working inside of it, an array list unsurprisingly uses an array. Uh, this notation, you know, so it since it's an array of everything, we would say. Normally, it's an array of objects, but since we're, we want basically that to be an array of all the same things, we call it an array of, of generics, an array of E's. And so um, that seems a bit weird, right? But uh, remember, what happens when we say we want an array list of strings, this turns into strings over here, right? When we want an array list of... Um, of uh, of integers, this turns into an array list of integers. Okay, so this turns into an array of integers over here. So that's pretty nice. Okay, um, 
let's see. So other things we want to keep track of. So the first thing when we're creating a class like this is that we always want to find out what are the instance variables we need. So the first thing is that we need a place to actually store our data, which is an array. The second thing we need is probably let's go ahead and just keep track of how big our array list is going to be. So public int size. Um, the last thing we're going to do is create a um, another variable called uh, well, two more variables. One is called capacity. And capacity is basically, that's just going to allow us to keep track of the size of this array. So size is basically the number of things in the array. And your capacity is how much stuff can be stored in the array. So um, for instance, when we were going through this example over here, um, when we're working with this, uh, this list over here, it has se its size is seven, right? It has seven items in it, OK? Its capacity, the default initial capacity for an array list is 10, meaning that it can store up to 10 items in it. So its capacity is 10. It doesn't matter if I remove items or add items, its capacity will be 10 until it fills all the way up. Once it fills all the way up, if I try to add another item, well, then we're going to have to make more space and its capacity will go up. We'll get into that. That makes sense to everybody, though? The capacity is the amount of space the underlying array can hold. The size is the amount of stuff actually in the array. Everybody following so far? I want to make sure that, OK. Um, also, I'm just going to create a public static void, sorry, public static uh, final. You know, all, let's use all the modifiers on this uh, for a um, initial capacity. Basically, how big is this? What is the default value that all lists are going to use to start off with, right? And we're going to say we initially want space for 10 items, OK? So the first thing we need to do is create a constructor so we can actually, you know, build this, and then as we write our methods, we can test it. Okay. So public my array list. So how do you write a constructor with these with the weird generic thing? You just write it like normal. You don't have to worry about that. Okay. So let's go ahead and work through this. So in reverse. So the capacity should be equal to the Right? The capacity is going to be equal to our initial capacity. Nothing too exciting there. OK, what about our, so I'm going to go through this from like the easy ones to the hard one. So now let's figure out what the initial size of our array is going to be, our array list is going to be. Well, it's not going to have anything in it, so that was easy to figure out, right? Size, pretty easy so far. And the next thing we need to do is that we want to create an array. We want this dot data to be an array uh, equal to Let's of size 10. So now normally we could do something like this, like e, you know, and now it's 10 bit, and now it's 10 big, or rather it's, sorry, initial, I remember how to type the things that I was typing, sure. Initial capacity. Right? Now there's only one problem here, which is the only thing that I have an issue with generics, and I still don't know why this doesn't work, uh, which is that. Basically, you cannot create a generic array. You just can't because it doesn't know what's going in there. Uh, so we have to improvise. Uh, and annoyingly, we actually have to cast here. Um, not sure how the Java array list code actually handles this, but I'm sure they have something that's clever. But I, this works, where basically I say it's a new object. And then it says, well, you can't take objects and store it in ease. And I'm like, well, it's all going to all be the same thing anyway. So I just simply take, take my, I create a new array of objects and then cast it to an array of E's. This works because they're all going to be the same type, right? So, and they all are memory locations anyway. So, this works. Uh, you will not have to, you will not have to memorize this. You won't be tested on this. This is just simply a, the hacky solution that that uh, the authors of the book we're working with came up to solve to create an array like this, OK? You're not going to be tested on that bit, right? So don't worry about that. In fact, all the stuff I'm writing here, it's not something that you're probably going to be covered in a test. In tests, we, more, we care more about, uh, with linked lists, how to build them and how to use this internal stuff in there. With the array list, though, we're just doing this to build up, like, to understand how this thing actually works, OK? So. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and start by writing some really easy methods to work this. So first is we'll do a public int. We'll first complete the size method. 
and that's fairly straightforward. All we're going to do for that is uh, any suggestions? Return size. Yeah. So return this dot size. That was pretty easy, right? Okay. Don't really have anything uh, special going on there. A public int returns this dot size. Um, there's also another method in that I didn't go over, but there's also one that's also very easy called uh, called public boolean is empty. And you can kind of guess by you know the name of it what it does. It returns true if the, if the list is empty and false if it's not empty. Well, how do we know if it's empty or not? If the size is zero, yeah, exactly right. If size is equal to zero. So, so if the size is equal to zero, return true. And just because I want to get better into the habit, this if this object size is zero, return true. Else, I know, and I'm, I'm going to just condense this to one line, by the way. Uh, return false. So if so, if you look at this, though, we have a bit of we can be a bit clever about this. Like if the size is equal to zero. In other words, if this evaluates to true, return true. Else, if it evaluates to false, return false. So we can just condense this to one line instead. And instead of returning uh, the result, instead what we'll do is that we'll return the result of that. And that just simply makes our code just shorter. So we're gonna if this size is if the size is equal equal zero, right? If this is evaluates to true, we're gonna return true. If it's not equal to zero, it's gonna return false, right? So there we go. Two methods knocked out, knocked out like that. All right. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is, well, in order to really test this thing, though, I mean, we can test this to make sure that it works, right? Or kind of. Uh, so my array list, uh, my array list of integer list is equal to new my array list of integer. Okay. So now I can do system.out.println, and we can print a line like list.size. Right? We can print out the size of the list, right, which should be 0. And we can also print out whether or not it's empty. And if we... And, you know, it's just nice to test code, especially when we get that casting thing, just to make sure it actually compiles. So it's working. Great. All right. So, unfortunately, this is pretty boring until we actually add stuff. And I can't avoid, you know, talking about that forever. So we're going to go ahead and start adding stuff. Okay. So public. Um, so remember, there's two add methods. The first one is public boolean add. And we add some item to the list of type E, right? And then we say we return true or false whether it's successful or not. So I'm just going to put return true. I'm going to put return false over here because actually we're not done with it yet. And once we're done with it, we'll just simply say return true. Okay. Um, and it's overloaded. So I'm going to focus on the, uh, on the, you know, this one. And then we'll come back to this one. But the other add method, it, return, if you've, it returns nothing. And it takes in an index. And then an item you want to add. And it says... Uh, this I this at this index, please insert this item right over there. And it doesn't return anything. Okay. So first, there's so there's a couple things we need to do here first. The very first thing we want to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and so I don't forget it later. Remember to increment the size, right? We have, we at the end of adding something, I want to make sure I increment the size for it correctly. Okay. Why am I not doing that here yet? Um, because what I'm going to do is that I'm going to have this method, the one argument method called the two argument method, so that I can be lazy. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is say if. Um, so if the first thing we want. So now that we've taken care of this, so that we don't forget it, uh, we want to make sure that if we add something somewhere, if we're trying to add something, it's actually at a valid location we can add it to. So what we're going to do is that if the index is out of bounds, I'm going to yell at the user and tell, call them an idiot or something. Okay. So, uh, so first, let's think about the ways this could be out of bounds. How can in, what are so? What is one way index can be out of bounds? What's the really easy way? So yeah, it's negative. It's less than zero. If the index is less than zero, it's out of bounds. Obviously, so can't do that. Um, so and if that's the case, we'll just simply say. 
uh, throw new, let's see, uh, I think it's array, I did this yesterday, so I shouldn't have trouble remembering, array index out of bounds exception. It's a long word, but you can also just simply do out of bounds exception. And actually, I can pass a message in here, I think. Like, you know, something helpful. <laughs> okay, um, but in seriousness, you know, probably put something more helpful in there. But the array index out of bounds should tell us basically where we are, you know, in that. Um, but there's another way we can be out of bounds, right? We can go past that. Now, one of the big things here is that, like, uh, you know, when I'm adding an item to this, uh, let's, let's go back to this one and see how it behaves. So list, right, I've got... 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I've got uh, in, up to index 6. There's 7 items in, in there, right? List.size is equal to 7. And now there's 7 items in the list. And I can add to... Um, now, of course, if I try doing this, right? Add to index negative 1. List.add to index negative 1. Uh, and axe, right? Which is totally not a sword. Right, tells me that, hey, you can't add to negative 1 because that's out of bounds. Right? Similarly, I can't add to index 1,200 because that's not a valid index. Right? 7 long. But what I can do is that I can add to index 8. Now, why can I add to index 8? Well, we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh, I'm sorry. Can't add to index 8. My bad. Sorry, I forgot how big it was. Can't add to index 8. What it can do is add to index 7, right? Why? Well, because that adds it right onto the end of the list. 7 is, I, if I want to add something into the end of the list, it makes sense that I could just place it in index 7, right? And, and if I couldn't, right, if I couldn't do that, let's go ahead and just kill our list by going, I think, list.clear, right? If I couldn't do that, then if I couldn't do this, add to index 0, um, if I couldn't do this, then we'd be in trouble, right? Because then I couldn't add anything to the list, right? So you can, so the valid indices that you can add something to are any of the current indices that exist, which are zero all the way to size minus one, as well as size. You can always add something to index size. So this was, this one is, uh, is this so the list is now size one, so I can add to either index zero or one. Those are the valid indices I can add. So anything beyond size I can't add to. Right? So if uh, index is greater than size, right? Size is the last index I can possibly add to, right? Then I want to throw it in a rate index out of bounds exception. And now I can go back up here and actually finish this method, return true. And all I'll do is say this. I want to add this item, and what index I want to add it to. I want to add it to the very end, right? And the thing is size long. The last thing is that size mi index size minus 1. So I want to add it to index size. Um, so, oh, right, so I need this. So I need to do add. Right, add this dot si add item at index this dot size. All right, so great, um, but we aren't actually storing the thing right now. But fortunately, since we've got since this is the entire thing, idea of an array list is that it runs under array, it's actually going to be kind of really trivial to store it, right? We just simply all we have to do is simply say uh, add, right? We all we have to do is simply say data. Sorry, this object data array. This dot data, right? Well, we're trying to add some, we're putting something in at index. It's equal to, now I'm going to have to go back and put a lot of code over here, by the way. Um, but don't worry about that just yet. So uh, I'm working on, bas basically I'm building up to basically the full method. Okay, so this dot data is equal to, um, let's see, is equal to the item, right? So I'm just going to store that item there. So this will work as you can might imagine, only for adding stuff to the end, right? So let's go ahead and just 
try that out. So uh, list dot yes. Right, I can't create this, uh, increase the size of an, a, of an array once it's been created. So how can we add stuff to this array? I'm going to get to that, so don't worry. You're all, all shall be revealed. It's actually kind of, you know, it, it's kind of, you know, boring actually how, how it works. So system.out.println, uh, let's print out our list. And as you can imagine, this is actually right now going to be less than useful because right now I don't have a two-string method. So I guess we're going to have to fix that too. All right, so uh, system, so let's go with public static, sorry, not public static, but public string to string because we want to see what's currently in our array so we can debug it as because we're going to get into some, you know, we think, oh, it's just as simple, but it's not. We've got a couple of things we just need to take care of first. So public string to string. So you'd think maybe I could do something clever like return arrays dot, to string um, this dot data and actually you'd be kind of right right well but but with a caveat it's only gonna really so let's go ahead so we've we check the size we see it's empty we add three ones to the list and then we print it so we run it and then we print out it says one 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 and then a bunch of nulls and that's actually to be expected because we're printing remember data is 10 long right data is 10 long and we added three ones to it. So we added a one here, a one here, and a one here. And then, so the nulls got replaced with ones. Now, obviously, when we actually want this done, we don't want a bunch of nulls hanging out at the end, right? The user should, it, that, the fact that basically we have empty space, it should be invisible to the user. So one and a bunch of nulls, then we have two ones and one less null, and then three ones and one less null, right? So that works. Uh, what doesn't work, of course, is that it's, we're not, so let's go ahead and say index zero, right? I want to now add all these things to index zero, the very beginning of the array, right? Right, and what happens? Well, we just simply overwrite the same slot over and over again, right? Because we aren't actually, because that's what we programmed it to do. So, okay, that's a bit of an issue. So what we need to do is that... Um, we need to move, if we insert something at an index, we need to move all the items out of the way, essentially. We need to move everything out of the way. The only time we don't really need to move everything out of the way is that if it's at, at the last. So let's see. Um, and again, so for inserting it, we just need to shift all the items to the right, okay? We need to shift all the items to the right. Um, Let's see. So that's going to take a for loop. So for, so what items do we want to move? Well, easier if I draw this because I'm kind of a graphical finger, um, except you know I'm terrible at it. So I thought I, I thought I threw some uh, dry erase markers into here. Oh yes, my pocket. So uh, let's go ahead and just. Um, Go ahead, and that should switch us back to, um, yep, so that should switch us back to that. So, now I don't. so let's say we have this uh, array list over here, and I'm just going to create it as a giant block. Um, we've got seven, nine, let's go ahead and actually give them like uh, letters because so we don't get our indices confused. A, B, Q. Z, right? So we've got, you know, five slots. This 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 array we're dealing with has a capacity of five, and it's got four elements in it, right? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say I want to insert C into index two, right? What needs to happen? Well, what needs to happen is I got to take. Let's see, is there an eraser? Yes, there is. I gotta take Z over here, and I got I need to move that over. Of course, I can't just move it over, right? I you know I can't. I'm not just gonna. It's kind of just wasteful to say copy Z over here, okay, and then replace it with null, because what's gonna happen? Q's gotta move out of the way too, 
Instead, it makes more sense to just say uh, copy Z over here and then, uh, then copy Q on top of that. So once everything has been moved over, right, I'm just going to overwrite over here. Does that make sense to everybody? So I'm going to just take everything from the uh, from the right where I want to, in, from over here, okay, starting uh, and move it over. Now, what index do I have to start moving over stuff from? Well, I wanted to put stuff, right, we were dealing with index 2. This was at 0, 1, 2, 3, but I need to, have, of course, I can't work with these numbers. I've got to be more abstract about this, right? So um, I started with the last one, though. And this last one is always at index size minus 1, right? So we want to start at index size minus 1. So let's start with that for loop So and figure out the parts. So for int i is equal to size, so this dot size minus 1, right? And then since we're starting at the end and going down, we want to do, we're going to do i minus minus, right? So that takes care of that part, but we still got to figure out when we want to stop. And we don't want to do it, so we move this one over, starts size minus one, then we go down over to here. And then once we get to here, we don't want to move this one, right? We don't want to copy this one over. So we want to stop once we get to the index that we're inserting something into, right? So we do, uh, so while i is greater than or equal to size, so not size, but index. So while we are at the index, we want to keep doing the same operation. What is the operation? We're going to take what's here and copy it to our slot, uh, to the slot we have on uh, to the right of us. Okay. So take what well, we're at, so we're at, we're at index i. We want to go to the, we want to copy it to the slot to the right. So what's at index i? So take what's at um, index i. So data i and copy it over to the right. So what is the Square one to the right, that would be i plus one, right? So take what's in i and move it over to i plus one. Okay? Now you might worry that this goes out of bounds, but we're going to take care of that because we're, we'll take care of that, right? In the same, um, you know, kind of deal that what if we're, we have too many items to add, right? Because the only way this is going to go out of bounds if the is if the array is already full, right? So let me just. Dem to, again, to demonstrate, the only way this can go out of round, though, right, is if I want to insert, so say we've done the insertion operation, right, is C, and then Q and Z, right? So the only way this is possibly going to go out of bounds if I do another operation like this, so if I want to insert uh, D into index 3, right, I'll start over here, and I can't move this one over, right? So obviously the solution, to, so we'll address this, but the solution to this is obviously make sure there's always a space to add things to it. Well, how? I'll get to that. But for right now, let's go ahead and make sure that this, this code works. 4 into i is equal to the size, so we start at the end of the list, so the last item, and we go down to the, ind to the index where we're adding thing, and what we're going to do is that for each item, we're going to move it one, we're going to copy it over to the right. Okay? Um, so let's go ahead and run this. And please work, please work, please work. It works. Right? So... Uh, let's go ahead and add 4 first, and then we're going to add 5 to index 0, and then we're going to add uh, 7 to index 0, right? So we should get 4, then 5, then 7 at the first location. So that works. I mean, that's not exactly like the greatest unit test ever, but, you know, it's, you know, uh, we'll take it for right now. Okay, so, of course, now we are dealing with the issue, though, that you pointed out earlier, and I'm, uh, you know, that what it happened. You know, we've got an array of size 10. So if I decide to do this, for int i is equal to 0, you know, i is less than 1,000, i plus plus, right? Uh, and then I do uh, list.add, you know, i to this. I've, I've got a bit of a problem. Um, let me just simply do system.out.println. List, OK, 
Okay? Right? I do I add all the stuff and I get an exception. Okay? Um, because you know there's no, I filled up all my space. So there is no way to um, and you're completely right, there is no way to actually increase the size size of this array. So we're just gonna fake it. Um, we are going to create so what we're gonna do is that uh, if the size of the list is equal to the capacity of the list, okay? If the size of our list is equal to the capacity, then we are just simply going to solve this problem. And I'm going to create our method called uh, reallocate. Okay. As soon as I remember how to spell reallocate, right? So um, we'll create a private method because I don't want somebody user, uh, some somebody on the outside to accident to use this method, right? Because what this method is going to do is that this is going to increase the size of our data array. And the way it's going to do that is by creating a new array that's twice the size of the old array and copying everything over. It's stupid, yes, but it's the way it actually works. This is the way that array lists work. If you run out of space, it just creates a new array, twice the size, moves everything over. Yeah, well, it's going to be something, uh, I thought it would be something mystical and like really secret. Nope, first of many disappointments in this class. Um, so what we're going to do is that we are going to create a... Um, we're going to create a new variable to keep track of the old data array, right? I don't want to lose it yet because I need to copy everything over, right? Old data is equal to this dot data, right? So I'm going to have a memory locate, so I'm going to store it. Uh, and then I'm going to have a E. So then I'm going to have a this dot data. I'm going to create a new um, array. And the way, again, I have to do that is I have to do the whole casting new um, array of objects. But what's the size going to be? Well, let's go ahead. It should be twice the size of the old one. So this old one was capacity. So let's go ahead and double our capacity. Uh, why double it? Well, if we were only increasing the size by the capacity by one, basically we'd be calling this method every single time because we'd add one to the size add one to the capacity, and we'd be back here this, uh, with every time we added something. So we double it so we don't have to go through this method, because this method, as we'll learn, is expensive. It takes what we it takes O of n time, as we put it. So this capacity is equal to times 2, right? This just takes the value in capacity, multiplies it by 2, and stores back in itself. So we double our capacity, say, let's create a new object of capacity, and now we just got to copy everything over. So um, that's a for loop. For int i is equal to 0. i is less than size, because that's the number of stuff in there, size. i plus plus. And all we have to do is say data is equal to. So just copy the stuff from the old data into the new data. It wasn't actually that hard. Um, so now let's go ahead and run our code. And it works just fine. And notice that we've got, we went up to, you know, a thousand, right? We've got one through zero through nine nine nine, so we added a thousand things to it. And then we have all this extra space out, uh, you know, just all these nulls just hanging out there, waiting, waiting to be used. So let's go ahead and take care of this. So that's it. That's all we have to do for add. So this is the add method. Uh, if it's out of bounds, right? If it's out of bounds, if we can't, if it's an item, if it's on an index, we can't add it. We insult the user, right? Give them an error. Okay. If size is equal to capacity, right? If we're, if our array is full, what do we do? Make a new array that's twice the size and copy everything over. Okay. Give the user more space. Now this is also so this is so this is great because the array is always as big as it needs to be. But this is also the curse. Right? I only needed a thousand items. I need a thousand items, right? But I run this, and I have a bunch of empty spaces, uh, of empty, empty space. And these nulls do take up space, right? They're just empty spots just sitting in an array. It's our array list. So the disadvantage, of, one of the big disadvantages of an array list is that space um, is easily wasted because a lot of times it will just double the size, and you don't necessarily need double the size. Okay? All right. So then what we do is that we basically we start at the last index, right? And if we're adding something at 
index size, we're adding something onto the end, then of course this is just going to get skipped, right? Because the index is going to be greater than. And let's just double check that to make sure. But actually, no, we were doing fine with that. Oh, and let's do go ahead and text, test to make this sure, this sure that this works in reverse. So adding each element to index zero. This will take. So that works just fine. Um, where did 999 go, though? Hmm. Did not work as well as I hoped it would. So let's go ahead and get this back down to 10 and see what happened. Did I make a mistake there? 0, 1, 0, 9, 8, 7. So let's go ahead and go up to 11 and see what happens. 10, 9, 8, 7. So why didn't it work for 1,000? What happened there? I think it did. Do you think it did? Oh, okay. I were we like over one or something? Was it like that? Was it like this? And I just didn't notice it. Possibly. I'm sure I'll catch it on the replay. Okay. So, um, all right. So, anyway, so that works. That's fantastic. Um, we so now that we so we moved we shift everything over as need be. We store the item and then we return the, and then we inc increment the size. All right. So before we get any further, I want to take the time to t kind of take a small break slash give you a quiz. I know that's not really the, a break, but uh, okay, you're going to learn that these quizzes aren't really too bad. So if you've got a computer, go to Canvas. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to stop the recording right here because I'm about to tell you what the password for the quiz is. So um, you know.